Short field, soft field, what's the difference and why do we have to practice those takeoffs and landings in our training? Thanks to Luke for suggesting this video. Once you get your certificate, the world is your oyster. You can go land at your parents' goat farm or a remote strip up in the mountains. Maybe you'll get unlucky and lose your engine and have to put the airplane down in the field somewhere. Knowing how to do a short and a soft field takeoff and landing can help you operate safely and efficiently. A couple of important notes before we start. Always follow your POH or your airplane flight manual. Just because someone on the internet said to do it this way doesn't mean that you should. So keep in mind that you need to adjust for a bunch of factors, like hot and humid, high density altitude, a 35 year old airplane with followed spark plugs. All I'm trying to say is that you should add some margin to your performance calculations. A few things that will come in handy later. Ground effect. Ground effect happens when you're less than one wingspan above the surface. The induced drag, or the part of the drag that creates lift, is reduced, which means more lift, or an increase in lift at a slower airspeed. The downside of this is that your airplane can become airborne before reaching the required takeoff speed. Also as a review, VX is the best angle of climb where you get the most altitude with the shortest horizontal distance, and VY is best rate of climb where you get the most altitude within the shortest amount of time. A short field takeoff is basically pushing the airplane to its maximum performance. It's one of the more difficult maneuvers where you need precise inputs to do it properly and safely. The reason for a short field is, as you can probably guess, it's a short field. You might also have some obstacles to climb over, or it might be a one-way in, one-way out strip where your effective runway length is reduced when you take off with the tailwind. Here's how we do it. You set the flaps to whatever the POH recommends, and you use as much runway as you can. Back taxi if you have to, use every inch of that runway. We're gonna hold our brakes and apply full power. As the engine gets up to speed, we're gonna release the brakes and accelerate rotating at VX. You want to make sure you rotate at the correct time so that you don't settle back down to the runway once you climb out of ground effect. We're going to maintain our VX until we're clear of obstacles, which is usually 50 to 100 feet, and then we'll pitch down and transition to VY and clean up the airplane by retracting the gear if it's retractable and retracting flaps one at a time. The big thing with short field takeoffs is you want to make sure that your airspeed control is precise. You don't want to stall the airplane because you get too slow and you don't want to rotate too early and settle back down. Also from a sight picture perspective, the nose is way up there so it looks like you're pretty much stalling, but you're actually doing fine. A short field landing is basically a short field takeoff, but in reverse. You're flying in over an obstacle and you don't have a lot of runway to stop once you get down to the ground. A short field landing is basically a normal landing with a steeper descent angle on final. You want to make sure you're configured early, that way all you're focusing on is maintaining your descent speed to the runway. Once you're configured, get on that descent path and maintain your airspeed in the POH. It'll probably be lower than your normal approach speed. Once you get to the flare, you have to have it timed perfectly. If you round out too early, you can stall the airplane and land fairly hard. If you come in too fast, you'll end up floating down the runway and not have enough room to stop. After you flare and touch down, you want to make sure you get on the brakes and stop in the shortest possible distance. The point of soft field takeoffs and landings is that you're taking off from a non-perfect runway. Things like grass, maybe there's mud, snow, slush, something like that, and you need to get off the ground as soon as you can to reduce all that drag on the wheels and transfer the weight to the wings. Meanwhile, you want to make sure the nose wheel doesn't get stuck as you're bouncing around some rough terrain. So the way we do the soft field takeoff is by doing a rolling takeoff. You want to keep the airplane moving and you don't want to get stuck. We're also going to have the yoke full aft so that we can use some of the elevator to get the pressure off of the nose as we go. So we're rolling, we get on the runway, and we start accelerating. We're going to ease off on the yoke a little bit, and as soon as the airplane is able to fly, it will lift off, and we're going to keep it in ground effect by pitching down a little bit so we don't fly out of ground effect. You'll rotate at a much slower airspeed than you normally would, and that's okay because you're still in ground effect. But you want to make sure you stay in ground effect while that airspeed builds up to VY and then you can continue on climbing. And once again when you're climbing away you can clean up the gear, clean up the flaps and continue on your way. A couple things you don't want to do is have too high of a pitch as you rotate that could cause you to stall and come back to the ground. You also want to make sure your control inputs are nice and slow so you're not bouncing in and out of ground effect and settling back down. A soft field landing is basically a normal landing except you leave a little bit of power in so that you can slowly transition to the landing. So we leave a little bit of power in in the flare, we slowly touch down, and as we start slowing down we're going to add more aft back pressure to keep the nose off the ground. You probably won't need any brakes on a soft field because there's so much drag from the grass or whatever you landed on, and you might even need to add power to continue rolling down the landing strip. 
Some things to look out for on the soft fuel landing. You want to make sure you don't have an excessive descent rate as you're coming down. And you also don't want to touch down hard or drop the nose after you land. So that's the overview of short soft fuel takeoffs and landings. You might have a situation where you have a short field and it's also rough, so you do have to do a combination of both the techniques. Now in training, the problem with simulating these is that they're all simulated on a nice level paved runway, and you have to use your imagination to imagine obstacles or a rough field. You can think of it like this. For a short field landing, you want to make sure you land on a precise spot and stop pretty quick. For a soft field, you want to make sure the nose stays off the ground and you touch down really soft. And if there's any crosswind, you want to make sure you're always applying your crosswind corrections. So that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. Have fun, fly safe, and always keep learning. See you next time.